Another useful feature within the String Builder is the accessories. If I click on the Add Accessories tab, we'll pull up a dialog that shows me a library with a wide variety of different accessories that we have available to us to add to the string. Some accessories are only appropriate for casing. Other accessories are only appropriate for drill pipe or drilling assemblies. If I click on the Type drop-down box, it pulls up the different categories of types of accessories that can be added. Because this is a drill string, let's just look at the NRDPP, Non-Rotating Drill Pipe Protectors. The library will become modified strictly for non-rotating drill pipe protectors now, and you can see that we have a wide variety of Western Well Tool devices that can be added to the string. The pipe OD that these devices are intended for is the column on the right, and since we have a 5.5 and 5-inch drill pipe with 5.5 drill pipe on top, the most appropriate accessory to add would be either this 5.5-inch super slider or this 5.5-inch super slider version 3. Why don't we just go ahead and add that component by clicking on it, the left, left click, and then dragging it over to the portion of the string where we want to add the accessory. Since the devices are normally running cased whole, let's drag them up to the very shallow part of the string. By default, we're assuming that the section length is 1,000 feet long and the spacing is one per joint. Now, I may want to run much more than that, and I could do that by either manually changing the section length or by grabbing and dragging the device anywhere on the string or expanding the length by grabbing the red shaded area. Now I have non-rotating drill pipe protectors across all of the cased hole 5.5 inch drill pipe. Some of the specifications of the devices include the length, their weight. In reality, they don't weigh zero. We just don't happen to have the weight for the components. The outer diameter, the side force limitation, and the junk slot area through the tool. Now, the junk slot area could be calculated manually by clicking the JSA button, and if you happen to know the width of the blades and the diameter of the body, then the JSA will be recalculated. The torque friction factor is also a key component, particularly when you're talking about torque reducing tools. By specifying a tor torque friction factor in this dialog box, what it's telling ERA is that you're we're wanting to only use a torque friction factor of 0.1 across the interval at which these devices are installed, which is a fairly reasonable number. In general, that value will range between 0.1 and 0.2 in most circumstances. For a non-rotating drill pipe protector, I wouldn't want to click this rotating box because then all of a sudden the device would no longer be non-rotating and would have very different torque and drag effects on the string. Conventional drill pipe protectors would be rotating, and I could create a custom rotating drill pipe protector by clicking this box and then changing some of the details within the screen. So that's how we would enter non-rotating drill pipe protectors onto our pipe. Let's say that we want to add centralizers to casing. So we'll close this string dialog box, and we're going to go back to our home screen by clicking the home button and then double clicking on 9 and 5 eighths casing. If I click on the builder and the advance button, it will pull up a string builder for my 9 and 5 eighths casing. If I click on accessories, and now I want to add centralizers, let's say a rigid centralizer to the string, it pulls up my library of rigid centralizers. And if I enter in a pipe OD of 9.6, these are all the 9 and 5 eighths rigid centralizers I have available. Let's say that I'm going to run a non-rotating Tesco Hydroform centralizer. If I drag that on over to the string, I can specify the interval at which those centralizers are installed by dragging and dropping. If the spacing happens to be more than one per joint, let's say it's two per joint, I can do that by just changing the value here. The spacing method could be defined as either the total number or the number per joint. Under most circumstances, we use number per joint. These centralizers have a certain amount of junk slot area, although this particular device, we don't have information in the library about it. So there is no junk slot area in this input. We could assume four blades, 
with a width of 2 inches and a body diameter of, say, perhaps 10.25. And then that would give me a junk slot area for hydraulic calculations. Because these are non-rotating devices, they're going to have a very specific torque and drag effect. If I wanted to add drag reducing tools to the string, I can also do that by adding accessories and clicking on the axial roller or bidirectional roller if I was wanting to reduce torque and drag. An axial roller for 9 and 5 eighths casing would be this Weatherford low drag model and I can drag that, put it onto the string and begin to manipulate its performance in this dialog box in the middle. What we're describing is its performance in cased hole or in open hole. In cased hole, what we're saying is it has an effect on drag and it's reducing friction by 60%. Now I may want to define its performance in a different way, such as that it creates a fixed friction factor of perhaps only 0.1, similar to the way that we had the non-rotating drill pipe protectors working. But under most circumstances, we tend to model roller centralizers as having 60% reduction in case hole. Notice that there is no effect in open hole. If I click on the open hole box, and if for some reason I wanted to change the performance in open hole, I could turn on drag effects and say that in open hole they reduce drag by 10%, if that's what I believe. That can also be turned off quite easily. Now for a con conventional centralizer, if I click back on these rigid centralizers, if I wanted to apply a certain amount of fixed drag to each one of those components, saying that rather than reducing drag, they're going to add drag. Notice that I'm on the open hole interval, and I'm going to click on drag effects, and I'm going to say this device has a fixed drag of 100 pounds. Now, each centralizer is going to add 100 pounds of drag in the up direction and in the down direction whenever I'm moving the string, if that's what I choose to model. So in this way, we can sort of model the additional effect that you get from bow springs or semi-rigid centralizers. Rigid centralizers typically don't add a significant amount of drag, so I actually want to remove this effect. No effect there.